Hey everyone, Shane here from freetechtutorials.com and I'm here today bringing your 10th Java tutorial. In this tutorial today we're going to be talking about infinite loops, we'll be telling you what they are and kind of how to avoid those, as well as we'll be looking at arrays and how we can use a for loop to quickly and easily print out all of the items in our arrays. So let's get started here. So what I've got on the screen here is a for loop that's really similar to what you would have seen in our last tutorial. Uh, we have our counter variable here, i, that we're starting at 5. We've got our condition statement, which says we want this to run while i is not equal to 0. Remember that exclamation point equal sign means not equal to. And then we've got our incrementer here, which is just saying increase by 1 every time you run. And then down here, we're just telling it to print out the value of the incrementer variable every time you run. Now this may look well and good, but let's run this and let's see what happens. Well look at that. It just keeps running and running and running and kind of never stops. So what we can do here is we can click this little red square here to stop our program from running in Eclipse. And regardless of what um, programming program you're using, like Eclipse or NetBeans or whatever else, um, almost any of them are going to have like a red X or a red square somewhere where you can stop your program from running if you run into something like this where you really just need to kind of shut it down. Um, but one interesting thing I want to point out real quick, as it was running just for that couple seconds, you can see it already printed out um, like one and a half million, more than one and a half million rows and that's just doing that by increasing the number from five by one. So you can see this shows you that loops run really fast, so they're a great way to run um, pieces of code over and over again really quickly and really efficiently. So now that we've seen kind of here what our infinite loop does, we need to figure out what the heck's going on. Why does it keep running and how can we fix it? Well, our problem here is with our condition statement. So let's look at this a little more in depth. So we're telling the for loop start at five and run while i, or whatever it is, right now 5, is not equal to 0. And after you, when you run the loop, increase the value of i by 1. So if we start at 5, it's 5, 5 is not equal to 0, true, increase by 1, now it's 6, 6 not equal to 0. Well, wait a minute, if it starts at 5 and it keeps counting up, then it's never going to be equal to 0. So this is always going to be true, so it's always going to keep running. So this is why it's really important that you watch this condition statement and you really um, pay attention and kind of think about it to avoid having this problem where the condition is always true or always met and it keeps running, it creates that infinite loop, it keeps going over and over and over again. So that's just something I should have probably mentioned in the last tutorial. Um, pretty simple thing to avoid, just kind of pay attention to it and remember that to stop your program you can click the little uh, red square down here to to stop it from continuing to run. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, arrays. So if you remember from, um, I think it was like tutorial 7, we had an array of strings and it was names of people that had taken our test. So I'm just going to go ahead and recreate that array right now. So get our array set up, get our names in here, and Shane Anna, Chris, and Sarah. Alright, so this is the array that we had before, just four names in it of people that had taken our mock test that we were using kind of an ex as an example. And now, important thing to remember from before, remember that in an array, every item in the array has an index value, and those indexes start as zero. So Shane's index zero, Jenna's index one, two, three, so on and so forth. And if we remember from um, the previous tutorial as well, we can print out the things in our, the names in our array or the items in our array by doing something like this right here. Print line, and then we just do the name of our array, and we use the index to print out whatever's at that row in our array. So I spelled that wrong. There we go. So let's go ahead and get rid of this for loop for the time being, and let's run what we've got here. It should print out as Shane. All right, there we go. So if we wanted to print out all the items in our array right now, what we would have to do is we'd have to create a line like this for every single item in our array. So we could do that 
we can just do all of our indexes, reference each one of them, and as we can see here, it will go ahead and print all of those out. Now, as you can imagine, this isn't very efficient, and if you had a bunch of people in your array, it would take a long time, and maybe you don't know exactly how many items are in, in the array, so you don't know how many lines to create, so this isn't really the best way to print out items in an array. However, for loops can help us with this. But one thing we have to tell the for loop is we have to tell the for loop um, basically kind of how many items are in an array. And so the nice thing in Java is that that functionality is built in for you. So what you can do is you can actually reference um, a function of an array and it's called length. So if you just do the array name dot length that will actually give you how many items are in your array. So let's print this out on the screen. System out print line. We're going to do test takers dot length. So this should give us the length of our array. There we go. Perfect. Shows us there's four items in this array. So we can use this test takers dot length, this this length function of our array in our for loop. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to create a for loop here. So we know it starts with four. We know we need a counter variable, which is going to be an integer since this is a number. We're going to set that equal to zero. And then we'll do our condition statement here. We'll say run this while i, or while our counter, is less than our array, our array's length. So we're going to run, we're going to start at zero, and we're going to run while i is less than our array length. And we're going to increase by one each time. So here's our array. Now we got to tell it what to do. Obviously we want it to print out the names or the item in each um, slot in our array. So pretty similar to what we do in the other example. We're going to do test takers, name of our array, and then we're going to put in the index here. Now normally before we would put 0 through 4 or whatever to get the certain item in our array. But since we want it to print out um, each item every time it runs, you print out an item every time it runs, we're going to use the counter variable like we've seen in our last tutorial. So what this will do now, it'll start at 0 and run until our array, until it gets to the length of our array and the index will print out. So it'll be test taker 0 will be the first one, it increases by 1 and then i is now 1 so it'll be test takers 1 and it'll go through until it gets to the end of our array. So let's try this out. Alright, so we can see that work there flawlessly. Great. So much easier than typing out every single line to, as we did before, to print out each of the items in our array. That's a great way. So there's one thing you need to be careful of though here. If you were to put, let's say for example, less than or equal to the length of the array, because if you think about it, we're saying run this while i is less than the length of our array. So how is it getting the last item of our array if we're telling it to run while it's less than the length. Um, well that's because indexes start at zero, right? So even though the length of our array is four, our indexes actually only go up to three. Zero, one, two, three. So if we do this right here, the less than or equal to, it's going to try to run with an index of four and there's no item at the fourth index. So let's see what happens. Ah, we got an array index out of bounds exception. This is pretty common when you're first starting to learn to do this. And if you if you can re remember that this specific um, exception right here, array index out of bounds, basically means that you're trying to reference an array item at an index that doesn't exist. That's really going to help you in your troubleshooting. So remember, anytime you get this array index out of bounds, that means, hey, you've told me to get an item out of your array at an index, in this case it's index 4, well 4 doesn't exist, so that's why we're getting this error here. So I hope this makes sense, I hope it helps you guys out, this is really cool to be able to uh, run through all of your arrays and print them on the screen really easily. Um, if you like this tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.